For the past 45 years, this country has been governed by three men who has had their place and they have, have done their time. Two of whom are asking to come back to govern this country again. With no plan and no vision. I say enough is enough is enough. I ask these two men. I ask Hubert Christie and Christie Ingram. Let my people go. I know you're listening. He said recently that this election is between Hubert Christie and Perry Ingram. And he said that anything in between will be crushed. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. That is very dangerous, you know, for a Prime Minister of a supposedly democratic country to say. This is an affront to democracy. And sir, Mr. Ingram, I cry shame on you to say that. Look around, Mr. Ingram. You can't crush all of us. We will not allow anyone to crush us. <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, your time is up. Game over. Log off. Your access will be denied this election. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commonwealth of the Bahamas cannot continue along the path that we are on. It cannot. It is destructive. Just listen to those words. Crush. It's destructive. It is not good. And for the sake of our country, for the sake of our future, for the sake of our children and their children, change must come. And it must be real change for one, for one, Bahamas. Hubert Christie and Perry Ingram, let my people go. imagination of our present leadership. Together, like we did in this room nine months ago, we shared hopelessness, tradition, mediocrity in the eye, and we pledge to redefine the possible. Nine months ago, we have ignored the chance of dead on arrival, to gallop triumphantly past the tombstone of 
failure toward what is destined to be the most historic elections since our forefathers' victory in 1967. Looking at you tonight, all of you, many of you, we, the 38 candidates, are taken aback that you have given us this rare opportunity to be your humble servants. You are witnesses of what Bahamians can accomplish. Band together by one cause. We are one people with one dream. Real change for one, for one Bahamas. To the visionless, and you know who I'm talking about, who said that another party could not exist in the Bahamas, let alone be a challenger for the government of the Bahamas, because others have tried and failed, we say, just because something has never been done before does not make it impossible. And all of the young children listening to that, all of the young children, children listening tonight, because something has not been done before does not make it impossible. Go after your dreams and make it a reality! You know, I was saying that it, because it was not done before, that it cannot happen. They were saying that we were stuck with the short-sighted leadership. We were stuck with only two options. We were stuck in the mud, spinning wheels, going nowhere, very fast. And proving the pond is wrong, you, the Bahamian people, have fueled a movement from 10 to now 38 candidates. The DNA and the Bahamas have walked away from seeing things as they are and asking why to seeing things as they could be and asking why not my brother why not why not why not for almost two decades now you have been bent pulled down by the daunting pressures and the heavy load of economic deprivation and empty promises but again I applaud you Bahamas for showing what the resolve of the Bahamian spirit is all about. And that although you bend, you will not break. A DNA government will not allow you to break either. Your change will come and your future will begin. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Miles Monroe says that vision is more important than governments. And that the purpose of a government is to lead the people of this country to the fulfillment of the national vision. From its inception, the DNA's movement has begun guided by a vision of a people esteem as the most precious resource above all natural and material resources and the nurturing of our intellectual and creative brilliance will help us become a genuinely democratic, economically prosperous, and yes, a socially mobile 21st century nation. Despite the lasting contributions of a Sir Randall Fox, Arthur Hanna, Sir Clifford Darling, Sir Lyndon Pillin, we have fallen short of their vision and it is up to us to make the mark. No government can fulfill these national potentials on its own. It takes the unified will of the people to truly propel us forward, upward and onward. In 1972, Sir Lyndon Pillen wrote those who questioned whether he could lead an independent Bahamas 
and said it is true that in 1968 I was told not now in another three to five years I was told not now but this was just another way of putting things off into the neverary so Lyndon came to the conclusion that not only were the enemies of the people never ready to accept change that benefited the masses but they always claimed that if change came the people would starve they would eat grass and the tourists would stop coming today they say independence means salvation end of quote today I proclaim before you sitting here tonight and those of you listening and watching history before you that my people will not starve Bahamians whose ancestors redefined what was possible so that we would not resort to eating grass will not rely on tourism alone to sustain this economy but rather on the God-given potential in Bahamian people and our Bahama land. We will not starve. And I ask you tonight to have faith in us. Have faith that we will honor the sovereignty of this nation and place Bahamian democracy in the highest regard. And in doing so, will not allow any person living here or visiting these shores to disrespect our sovereignty. <laughs> to disrespect the sovereignty of the Bahamas, its democracy or indeed its people. Wanna know it? Pride is the constant thread that links us all. No one and nothing can break that patriotic bond to preserve what is Bahamian. Preserve what is Bahamian. Preserve our heritage. Preserve our culture. We, the DNA, will see to that. Have faith that the DNA, while welcoming all persons from all cultures and nationalities, recognizes that the right to be Bahamian is a genuine submergence in our culture, our history, and our laws. Have faith that a DNA government will ensure that the needs of our citizens are priority number one. Therefore, work permits will only be approved when suitable and trained Bahamians are not available or are unwilling to accept such employment. A DNA government will, within six months of it coming to office, implement an immigration policy that will outline the process of short and long-term work permit applications, annual residency, spousal permits, permanent residency and citizenship. The DNA government will ensure that the Department of Immigration is run effectively and efficiently. The DNA government will introduce Immigration Watch and introduce Immigration Cadets. The DNA government will move with haste to determine the status of persons entitled to apply for residency and citizenship. Have faith the DNA will move post haste to regularize status of children born abroad to Bahamian married women. The DNA will amend the immigration laws to include the offense of harboring of illegals. Penalties under the immigration laws will be increased. The DNA will carry out routine and sustained apprehensions. 
and ensure that the most sophisticated technology is used to patrol our borders. We will rid in a humane way this country of shanty towns. The DNA will put to the Bahamian people by way of referendum whether persons coming to this Bahamas illegally after 2012 can apply for citizenship for themselves or their children who are born after 2012. Have faith that as your Prime Minister, Branville McCartney, will not enter another country and disrespect its democracy. The not disrespect a people of another citizenship and interfere with another country's politics. I will not do that. As your ambassador, insult your intelligence by allowing another head of state and any visitor to spit on your right to willfully vote for whomever you so well choose. I will not commit the selfish act of putting my interests, my personal interests, political or otherwise, above that of my people and the progression of this nation. You can have faith that we will put Bahamians first in their own country. I will be an ambassador you can be proud of nationally and internationally. My Bahamians, you can have faith that I will never disrespect the democracy that Sir Clifford Darling, Arthur Hanna, Randall Fox, Cecil Wallace Whitfield and Kenneth Isaacs fought for. I will not ignore the equality that Sir Lyndon Pennant stood for some 45 years ago. I will not do that to you. I cannot do that to you. Have faith that a DNA government will find new and creative ways to generate revenue to match the growing diverse needs of our people. So while we complete the projects that will inevitably be left behind by previous governments, a DNA government will focus more on production, design, technology, manufacturing, and incentive industries driven primarily by exported goods and services provided by local, local, local businesses. The economy, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the economy is not working for the bombers of today. It's not working. Within the first year of office, a DNA government will create sustainable opportunities for Bahamian small to mid-sized enterprises and businesses, particularly, particularly those in the agricultural and fisheries, alternative and renewable energy, and manufacturing and assembly industries. Small businesses, for those who don't know about business, for those who don't know about business, you ought to know that small businesses are the backbone to any economy. We have seen the demise of small businesses in this country. Consequently, ladies and gentlemen, the middle class is becoming extinct. We are quickly becoming a nation of have and have not, rich or poor. That's what we are becoming. Thousands of persons are losing their homes. Never before in the history in the history of the Bahamas of so many families suffered the humiliation, personal loss and social dislocation associated with the loss of their primary financial asset, their homes. What I find particularly disturbing is the fact that many Bahamians could still be in their homes today if the government had encouraged the Central Bank of the Bahamas to reduce the central bank rate from 5.25% to 2.25%. Had rates been lowered 
three years ago, many more Bahamian families would still be in their homes today. Indeed, this is a case of economic mismanagement, which has caused an ongoing social tragedy. We believe that there are three possible solutions to this foreclosure issue, and I want to dwell on it, which help to reduce the number of foreclosures. Firstly, the government needs to immediately ensure that there is a reduction of the central bank rate which will result in a decrease of the mortgage lending rates and thus lower monthly mortgage payments for all concerned. Secondly, the banks need to adopt the mindset that it's better to have an apple than lose the whole apple, which means that they should take a financial haircut. By this I mean that they should reduce the principal on their troubled mortgage to save 50% and lower the interest rate on the mortgages which in many cases would allow families to retain their homes. Thirdly, the government could have reduced its expenditure on some of the infrastructure work and put these funds in say the mortgage corporation's loan portfolio or another entity such as a foreclosure fund created for that purpose. These funds could have been used to buy distressed loans from the bank at a 50% discount from the original loan value. Then these homes could have been refinanced for the original homeowners at an interest rate of say 3 to 5%, which is many cases would have mortgage payments affordable for families. A big part of the Bahamian dream is home ownership. And it is most unfortunate, ladies and gentlemen, that this dream has become a living nightmare for many families because of circumstances beyond their control. A government that refuses to make use of monetary policy initiatives as has already happened globally. This is nothing new. The DNA believes that land is wealth. And therefore, Crown Land will be taken out of the Prime Minister's office for proper distribution to pe Bahamian people. You hear what I say? Proper dis distribution. Crown Land will no longer, under the DNA government, be used as a tool for po political favoritism. It has taken us too long to regularize generation property. This is indeed a priority for a DNA government. The regularization of land thus creating wealth. If you have land, you have wealth. The way government generates funds to operate is not working, ladies and gentlemen. What we've been doing for the last 40 years is not working. The system of taxation is not working. And moving this country forward, we will, listen to me carefully, we will have to look at a form of taxation by means of value-added tax. Exchange control must be revisited so that Bahamians can have the same financial opportunities as foreigners do when the foreigners invest in the Bahamas. At present, Bahamians are at a disadvantage in their own land. They play, their playing field is not level. Indeed, we will continue to give the foreign investor the red carpet treatment, but rest assured, this DNA government will give the Bahamian people the gold carpet treatment. We can't take no more mess, that's why we go on green. Corruption, ladies and gentlemen. Corruption. Nepotism, mismanagement and wastage must be stamped out in the government. There must be the de development of a national procurement agency that will oversee the purchases by government. We are informed that wastage in government spending amounts to approximately hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Getting this under control helps to reduce our national debt. Nepotism has almost become the norm in government. 
It seems that only a selected group of people keep getting them jobs. Can you imagine that? A selected group of people, the same handful that's been getting it for the last 40 years, still getting it. We need to stop this foolishness. And we need to stop it now. We all know that our economy must diversify if we are to move forward. Tourism cannot be our only industry. But with tourism, we must develop different avenues for visitors to our shores. We must develop, for example, sports tourism, cultural tourism, religious tourism, and medical tourism. We must also look at other destinations. This is a big world, you know. Diversification must come through expanding agriculture and marine resources, technology, industry, and manufacturing. We will become self-sufficient in food. I see it. The day, I see the day when we are exporters of food throughout the region. I see the day where we have an income for this country of half a billion dollars for food export. See it. Look at it. Grab it. Bahamas, believe in it. Believe that you can get it. Bahamas, let's do it. We only have to look at countries like Ireland and Singapore and Korea and see why they have achieved economic success. The key to success in each case was an economic plan and the impl implementation of an educational system that will produce a productive labor force to enable the success of the economic plan. We know that the government has no long-term economic plan and we must consider why this is the case. Well, consider this. The fact of the matter is that the key players, although respected, Let me repeat that if you missed it. Well, the fact of the matter is that the key players, listen, please, can we get the sound proper, please? The fact of the matter is this. The key players, although respected in the political arena, None of them were particularly successful in the private sector. The fact of the matter is that all our prime ministers have been career politicians. And it is very difficult to manage a business if you had no previous experience or expertise. The country ought to be managed like a business. And I am of the view that the problem with politicians making an economic decision is that the politicians will make his decision purely on political expediency and not on purely economic grounds. This must change. And have faith. DNA will change it. I think that we all recognize that our economy is at a crucial point. The way forward is not to maintain, ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. The way forward is not to maintain the status quo, but to set a new direction. Have faith in the DNA government to provide good governance. Be prepared for a participatory government that will unite and bring about one Bahamas for all Bahamians, irrespective of your political persuasion. Be prepared, Bahamas, for a prime minister to only have two terms. I am saying two terms and only two terms. This is indeed enshrined in the DNA's constitution. We will make it the law of the Bahamas. Be ready for a set date for elections and establish boundaries that will not be butchered for political expediency. There must be continued electoral reform and financial electoral reform. Under the DNA's government, there will be an office of an ombudsman to act on behalf and in the best interest of all the people. A watchdog for the people against the government. 
the powers of the prime ministers ladies and gentlemen must be revisited the prime ministers powers are extensive extensive so much so that in reality democracy comes around every once every five years a code of conduct act for public officials must 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 be enacted there are politicians listen to me carefully there are politicians who admit to wrongdoings you know and yet still they still sit in the house of assembly and be called an honorable man only in the Bahamas and the public disclosure act must be amended to ensure that if that it has teeth to bite corrupt politicians way after they leave public service no more foolishness man some politicians go into government broke as hell and come out a millionaire how can that be that is not good ladies and gentlemen that is not good this makes us look bad as a people to the outside world this makes us look like a banana republic under DNA government Bahamians can anticipate a transformation from consumerism particularly after an expansion and conversion of the College of the Bahamas and the Bahamas Technical and Vocational Institute on Andros and Grand Bahama with student housing job creation and population migration within the first and second term through public and private partnerships the DNA will invest in the development of flagship schools for and for flagship schools for film and creative arts and science and technology in Grand Bahama marine and agriculture science in Andros and schools of business medicine and government and political science in the capital during this not only trades a workforce that builds this economy as opposed to another's country but also attracts foreign students who alone will add millions of dollars for investors it is said that it does not matter who is in power you know as long as the cost of doing business is affordable and the process is clear and it's tra transparent and the environment is safe on average the Bahamas spends over 1.5 billion dollars a year on oil imports this amount to approximately 10 to 11 percent of GDP the low, to lower the cost of doing business and cost of living in the Bahamas we will immediately move to put in place measures proposed by the National Energy Policy Committee to cut our dependency on oil and encourage private sector businesses to develop projects to produce electricity using renewable energy sources for possible exploitation by BEC and homeowners while simultaneously establishing a more effective traffic traffic management and public transport system that can in the short term reduce average commute times in New Providence by 20 percent increase public transportation ridership by 10 to 20 percent and employ energy efficient lighting systems have faith ladies and gentlemen in the DNA's plan for family island development and effective local government and places to assist in this process of development as the DNA will move systematically to begin investing in substantive and infrastructural developments and job creation initiatives on the family islands with the aim of encouraging and making it attractive for family island residents to remain on their respective islands to assist with their islands development it will at the same time make it feasible for other family island residents who have moved to New Providence in search of job opportunities to return to their native islands this gradual population shift a decentralization of the population from New Providence
up to the islands will not only go a long way and find the islands, ladies and gentlemen, but it will also play a significant role in alleviating the stresses and social chaos that come along with overpopulation. Along with job creation, this move will have a drastic impact on incidents of crime in our society. And speaking of crime, the DNA will tackle crime head on. We will take no prisoners. There will be zero tolerance for crime. We are committed to ensuring that we become a disciplined society. We will sweat the small stuff. A society that we can truly call paradise and not be paralyzed by fear. Where there will be consequences for your crime. And yes, we will enforce the death penalty and make the law reflect that if you commit murder against anybody, anybody, not just a selected few, that you will be sentenced to death. Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? No bail for murderers! We will let the commissioner and his force carry out their duties without political interference. Have faith in us that we, unlike the present leadership, have the political will and fortitude to begin stabilizing this out of control, out of control crime problem. Bad boys! Bad boys! What are you going to do? What are you going to do when we come for you? Bad boys, bad boys, what you going to do? What you going to do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys, what you going to do? What you going to do when they come for you? The DNA is a reflection of the diverse groups that make up the Bahamas. We recognize, therefore, that while criminal laws are not being upheld, so are the country's labor rights. Foreign employers who feel entitled in their treatment of Bahamian workers usually mimic the continued disrespect shown to Bahamian workers by their governments. Not only because within the DNA there are unionists and those who uphold labor laws as employers, but have faith that a DNA government will take a very hands-on approach to workers' welfare. No longer will we ask the workers of this nation to pull themselves up by their bootstraps unless we first give them boots with straps. For far too long, they have struggled to prove themselves as upwardly mobile, hardworking and obedient individuals without getting or having the necessary support systems in place to assist them. The time has come when workers of this country and the leaders who are elected to represent their interests will be seen as partners with the government and not adversaries to government. The DNA government will come to power looking to force an environment where individual and corporate productivity are equal with self-worth and where the love of work is esteemed as a national obligation. Therefore, the body will, among other things, ensure that the workers' interests outweighs politics. Have faith that within the first 60 days that you're in office, your DNA government will begin to honor the tripartite agreement that other governments have failed to honor. We will work to include union organizations in the training and or orientation of public service employees. Facilitate the delivery of training and upgrading for workers at the College of the Bahamas and BTVI. Appoint promotion boards with union representation to consider promotion for workers in the bargaining units. And invite leaders of unions to have observer status at the Commonwealth heads of government and other meetings internationally where the decisions and outcomes impact workers' rights. It is time to pay some respect to the workers of this nation, you know, for their valuable contribution to the national development of the dreams of us all. You know, ladies and gentlemen, those who come to our shores and use their labor for profit and gain, it is time 
for you, the Bahamian people, to reap the fruits of your labor. You, ladies and gentlemen, have toiled long enough. If no one else will give you that respect, workers of this nation, have faith that the DNA will do that. But no, that change must come first. And that real change can only come with you and the DNA. This new generation of Bahamians and your party of your generation. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me closely. In the days to come, it's going to be very important that you take charge of your future. And don't give up. Do not give up. Become the captain of your faith and don't give in. Now is certainly not the time to huddle around the shadows of our homes around the water coolers, on the lines of radio talk shows. Show our shows, our comfort zones. Listen, we cannot stay in our comfort zone. We cannot complain. And we cannot point fingers to who to blame and be ashamed of. We cannot do that. For the current state of our beloved Bahama land, for the truth to be told, we are all to blame. We all carry an equal load for how we have allowed the ship to be steered. We have been divided by mere colors. We've been brainwashed to believe that because of political ties, we cannot work together to move this nation forward. That somehow one group is smarter than the other. That somehow we cannot coexist. Truly, you don't believe that. It's not too late to shake off that force of complacency that has brought us oppression, insensitivity, ignorance, bitterness, and false impressions that you do not deserve better. And so you should not receive better. The Bahamas is ripe with leaders waiting for a horn, the sound to rise from the ashes of doubt, with a fearless desire to bring better, brighter days to our shores, to the greatest nation of the world. Today, more than ever, before Bahamas, we must be willing without any reservation, without any reservation, stand up. Even if there's no surety that the others can stand with you. And steer the Bahamas away from treacherous waters to solid ground. Today, not tomorrow, is the time that we pick up from where our forefathers left off and fight for our country. Where our children are truly, our children are truly the beneficiaries of our labor. Tomorrow is indeed too late. If you are not willing to resurrect the 1967 vision, the Bahamas today, then we should prepare to live aimlessly forever. If we do not see the urgency to steer the ship toward the lighthouse, we will run aground. If Bahamians are too scared to fight for our birthright, then rest assured someone else will take it from you. If you refuse to uphold our democracy, then you would have denounced your Bahamian citizenship. But if you are ready to fight, fight for your rightful place in these elections, if you are willing to put away party ties and uphold the bond that ties us all, if you have committed to place people, place people above politics and seeing none, you vow to stand anyway. Don't worry about standing alone as I and 37 others are committed right here. They're committed. They're standing with you. There's no doubt that we have the power to steer the ship, our adversaries, and their successful tactics. Validate that we do every day since May 12, nine months ago. You have validated that the Bahamian people have the power to shift its alliance from one party in favor of another. You have the power to make life easier for your little boy, your little girl, all children of Bahamas and their children to come. You have the power to restore faith in your leadership. You have the power to realign our nation the way God destined it to be. You and only you have the power on who wins and loses. Who will rise and who will fall. You have the final say on election day. You will remind the Bahamas yeah. 
this region and so in the world that the power of the people is greater than the people in power.